raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. So the Ravens just wrapped up their first day of training camp. We had an important face missing. Lamar Jackson was sent home due to an illness, so he was not present during training camp today. Not a big deal. Harbaugh talked about it in his press conference and actually went on a pretty epic rant about Lamar Jackson. I'll just play that clip because it deserves its own space. And Lamar, for whatever reason, you know, uh, he gets a, there's a lot of great things said about Lamar, but there's a lot of stuff that's said that you got to just scratch your head about and kind of wonder, what's that person even thinking, you know? So, but we take it personally. You know, Lamar's a guy, all his life, Lamar Jackson has been a guy who's been answering those same questions. I'm talking about since he was a kid, junior high, high school, college, the draft, the success he's had in the National Football League, and it still comes up, okay? And he's still growing. He's got a growth mindset. He's going to get better and better, no doubt. But what does he have to do to prove himself to some people, right? And so the thing for me is, is it's talking about vision again. You know, there's a vision. And I believe the Ravens and we've always had a vision for Lamar Jackson. It's, it started with Lamar's vision and his mom's vision when he said he was going to be a quarterback. He was going to be a quarterback in high school. He's going to be a quarterback in college. He's going to be a quarterback in the National Football League. And we bought into that. We embraced it. We built an offense for it in, at 19. We're building another offense for it in 23 and 24 going forward, right? The next iteration of our offense around Lamar Jackson. Because in my opinion, the vision the vision for Lamar Jackson, and it's a vision, it's something you see it like it's already happened. You can see it like it's already been done. The victory has already been won when you pour into a vision. And the vision that we have together is that Lamar Jackson is going to become and be known and be recognized as the greatest quarterback ever to play in the history of the National Football League. That's the vision, all right? It's gonna happen by Lamar, his work ethic, and his brilliant talent by all of us pouring into that effort together as a team, teamwork, and by the grace of God and God's goodwill. That's how it's going to happen. And I believe it like we've already seen. Man, I just love how Harbaugh broke that down, and I've never really heard him talk quite like that about Lamar and about you know his vision for Lamar and their vision for Lamar and the strength of Lamar and his mom to have their own vision. We knew all these things, but just uh, it's a nice reminder. And uh, it's really nice hearing Harbaugh just kind of speak passionately about his quarterback like that, about our quarterback like that. So uh, excited for Lamar to get back on the field. Hope he has a speedy recovery. Someone who did miss today and a new face for the Baltimore Ravens. We've seen a few times throughout the offseason, but now that training camp's here, it still doesn't quite feel real that the Ravens have signed Derrick Henry. And he marched out there, took his first carry for the Ravens today in training camp. And I'm just so excited. My mind's just turning with all the possibilities of how the Ravens are going to use him, how Todd Munkin's going to use him, just the dual threat combination of Lamar Jackson with his speed and Derrick Henry and his power is uh, something you dream of as a fan, to be honest. So uh, I can't wait to see them out there together in real football. But uh, for now, we'll just enjoy these practice clips from Derrick Henry. And a lot of teammates have been raving about Derrick Henry this offseason. Seen him before? You see him in person? Yeah, you gotta stop. Like you gotta stop that first before you worry about somebody of my stature. <laughs> we had some key guys return on defense in Kyle Hamilton and Marlon Humphrey, who I did not really expect to be there day one, but I am beyond excited that they are there day one. Ryan Mink said that Marlon Humphrey was actually a standout at practice today. Harbaugh also raved about him in his press conference. Said he's still one of the top cornerbacks in the league, and I agree. If healthy. 
Marlon's a force, you know, and if whether we use him outside or in the slot, it doesn't matter. He's going to make an impact. I think he's best served in the slot, to be honest, but that is really dependent on Stevens and Wiggins and how well they're doing outside. So I uh, could see Marlon just kind of rotating around and he's played all over for us at corner. So I don't think that that'll be foreign to him. I think he'll be able to adjust to wherever he's needed based on whatever receiver matchup. But having Marlon back is huge. Having Kyle Hamilton back is huge. This defense is absolutely stacked. This secondary is stacked. I think uh, if fully healthy and if Nate Wiggins pans out like I think he will, that this is probably the best secondary in the entire league. And that is including new addition Eddie Jackson, who will be our third safety behind Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton. Eddie Jackson was out there for training camp today. He's wearing number 39, which he has worn in the past for Chicago. And it's exciting to see him out there day one, too. He just signed the contract. The news just broke, and he's already out here day one of training camp getting familiar with the defense. He's played with Roquan Smith before in Chicago, so there's some familiarity there, at least from a communication standpoint or a comfortability, you know, friendship, vocal standpoint. So I think Roquan's going to really be able to bring Eddie along. And not that anybody's weird on this team anyway. I think that everybody will bring Eddie along, but it's just nice to have a familiar face, somebody that you've went to battle with for a few years. So excited to have Eddie Jackson. I think that's a great addition. I still don't know the numbers yet. If the numbers have came Came out and I've missed them somewhere comment the numbers below but I'm sure that will come out soon but as I'm recording this I have not seen the Eddie Jackson one year actual numbers but I can't imagine it being very high I think this late in the off season, and he's not even really the top safety available I would say Justin Simmons is so I don't expect Eddie Jackson to be commanding some huge contract which is probably why the Ravens pulled the trigger on him they love these value deals especially later in the offseason we finally got more specifics on the TJ Tampa injury as well we know that he's on PUP along with Keaton Mitchell and then Adisa Isaac was on the non-football injury list for a hamstring they are none of them are back at training camp yet, but it came out that TJ Tampa had hernia surgery after minicamp. So he'll be another couple weeks, but there's no serious injury there, and that's not going to drag on. I've had two hernia surgeries myself. You can get back in a month or so, and it's already been weeks since minicamp anyway. So I think uh, TJ Tampa will probably come back and two weeks or so if I had to just throw a number out there don't quote me on that but I, I don't think it'll be too long I think we're going to get a healthy dose of TJ Tampa in the preseason and there's nothing really to worry about and just to clarify I've seen some comments say that if a player gets put on PUP that they got to miss the first part of the season that's once the 53 man's final and the season is here and you put someone on PUP for the regular season if you play someone on PUP or the non-football injury list right now you can come back whenever you want. So TJ Tampa can come back whenever he's healthy. Keaton Mitchell, I don't expect to come back during training camp. It's a possibility, obviously, but I would expect him to kind of sit on there for a little bit longer. And then Adisa Isaac, I have no idea. It just depends how that hamstring responds. But he also can come off that non-football injury list at any point and not have to miss regular season games. But if they're still on PUP and you have to keep them on PUP when the regular season's here, that's when they're going to miss the first four games. I think Keaton Mitchell's definitely a candidate for that, but I don't see TJ Tampa being a candidate for that. I think he'll be back fine way before the season starts and uh, hopefully play some meaningful preseason ball for us so we can get a look at where he's at because I'm super excited about that pick as well. And sticking on the defense, but in more positive news, David Ajabo, who Harbaugh said earlier would probably take some time to upgrade to team drills. He's been doing individual drills just coming back from that injury. But day one of training camp, He's fully available for team drills, so he's already upgraded from individual drills, so that's a great sign. Would love a David Ajabo breakout year. I thought we might get a David Ajabo explosion last year after that small taste that we got in his rookie year when he sacked Burrow, and only I think he only played like two games. I had high hopes for him coming into next season, but obviously he got injured and didn't barely even play last year. So not coming into this season quite as confident with David Ajabo. I'm more of a wait and see approach, but I know the talent's there and I just hope that he can stay healthy so that we can see him develop and, and use this talent and just keep getting better week after week and become an impact pass rusher for us because we need it. You know, we have Adafe Owe who's going to have a huge role this year. We re-signed Van Noy. We do have Tavius Robinson and 
you know, Malik Ham and, and Ajabo, but there's not a lot of proven studs there that you can just consistently rely on. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of responsibility for one of these younger players to kind of break out, whether that be Tavius Robinson or possibly Ajabo. And then Owe is going to have to become the guy that we need him to become. I know we'll get some interior rush from Matt Abike, but I really think that a lot of weight is going to be on Adafe Owe to really be that stud edge rusher that we need him to be. He's been close. He's shown flashes. We know he's insanely talented, but we need the production. You know what I mean? He's got to be disruptive. And I think if we can get our pass rush to have some kind of success, our secondary is so stacked and so talented that we are going to be able to do whatever we want on defense. So it's really just coming down to that rush. I do have confidence that some of these young guys can step up, and I do have confidence in David Ajabo's ability. He's just got to stay available. So that's pretty much it from today's first day of training camp. Not a lot of huge moments in practice. This is the first day. I think it was only an hour and a half. They're kind of just ramping up. I know Devin Leary hit uh, Wade on a long like 60-yard touchdown, and I think Arthur Mollick caught a tipped pass interception off Josh Johnson. But without Lamar there, you don't get a true taste of the offense yet. And it's so early in camp, you're not really going to get a true taste of what's going on either. So as the days go, though, we're going to see more and more highlights. We're going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to get a taste of which players playing where, who's, who may be starting. You know, that offensive line is still a huge topic. Harbaugh said that a week or so into camp, he wants that starting offensive line known. So definitely got my eyes on the offensive line to see how that pans out in the next coming days, weeks. But uh, we're going to get a lot of training camp practice each day. It's exciting that football is back. We're getting some real play on the fields. Hopefully Lamar gets back in there soon. But I appreciate you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They where the sense can tame the untamed.